Hello, North Vegan here, back with another episode of Kerbal Space Program 2 Exploration Mode. We are going to be checking out our next mission here, Out of the Atmosphere. Someone left an anonymous note that our launch wasn't a success. Let's make it undeniable. Launch a rocket from Kerbin and achieve an altitude greater than 70k. We did that last episode already. We're going to get 40 more science for doing this. Uh, so, um, we also got a little message here brought to you by... Kerbal Space Center, the nerve center of your agent. Oh, we already did this one, right? Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and check this mission out here. Mission brief. Hi, Director. You're just in time. We're in the middle of a crisis. Someone left a rude sticky note on the staff bridge beside the pole for best vending machine on campus. It began. Was the first launch really a success? The sentiment was mostly positive, but the writer whose identity I will track down, ended on a harsh note. Vessel didn't punch past the atmosphere and wasn't badical enough. Badical? Now why is that tone so irritatingly familiar? Plus we did break out of the atmosphere. <laughs> Good thing I always carry an ultraviolet flashlight because the writer somehow fit a second message in invisible ink. It said, if mission control punches through the atmosphere and into space, I'll buy them three coffee makers. Well, we accept their challenge. The perfect mission objective. Your objective is to launch a rocket from Kerbin and fly higher than 70,000 meters. As tempting as it would be to go through the atmosphere, we must make sure we're not playing an escape from Mr. or Mrs. Note Rider. Get out there and get those coffee makers. I'm going to get an intern to track down the sticky note culprit. Good luck and return when your report is ready to be submitted. Very good. We will do that. Let's go to the VAB. I think we unlocked some new parts last episode, so we should be able to add some new functionality to our rocket. Yeah, we got the Stay Putnik, which is a, uh, or the Stay Putnik, <laughs> um, however you want to say it. It is a very rudimentary uh, remote guidance unit, and I might use it for like a rudimentary satellite, uh, maybe on, even on this first rocket. I'm just thinking if we load. If we to hmm, let's just let's just take our current rocket that we used last time, and uh, pop him in here, the Deviant One. We're gonna name this uh, Deviant Two because it's gonna be basically the same rocket, with the exception of some additional science on board. And let's see, Science Junior. If we pop that bad boy on here like so that's only 3000 delta v so the deviant 2 uh, will have a little bit of trouble getting into orbit we don't have to get into orbit this time though you know we really just have to get past 70k so i think we'll just take this rocket the deviant 2 with some extra science we don't have to get into orbit it's fine Plenty of time to get into orbit. We're just going to go ahead and do the mission as it is uh, prescribed, and that is get above 70k. Who is going to be the Kerbal in the seat? Uh, let's send up Jack Dancer. Jack has been a lo my longest member, and he uh, is also... Um, interested in Kerbal Space Program, so... We're going to send up Jack and uh, get ready to launch. And here is Jack now getting ready to get into his rocket. That is a very nice haircut, Jack. And he is going to be the first Kerbal to run the Science Junior Science Module. He is uh, already... Uh, our, the, the first Kerbal in space has already been achieved by DV. Oh, uh, yeah, bummer. That's a real bummer, isn't it, Jack? But uh, you can at least be the first person to run the Science Junior and get us some additional science. So let's get started. It's going to be an evening launch. And the lights have just come on to the launch pad. And it is time for us to get the show on the road. Ready for launch. And we're off. Amazing. 
And we're going into space. Don't have to orbit this time. So that's fun. I'm just going to get up over 70k. And then we'll uh, be all set here. So once we get to 100 meters per second, we'll start doing our gravity turn. So that we come out over the ocean. Not worried about going in and getting into orbit this time around. Just going to try to achieve the mission. Because somebody didn't believe that we did it. I mean, if we just happen to get into orbit, that's okay too. I don't think we will. I don't think we quite have enough delta V. We'll be a little bit short. We should be able to make some pretty good moves here. As long as we're Apoapsis is above 70,000 is all that really matters. And right now it's at 30,000, so let's just stay right here. Second stage, again. Now nah, we're not going to have enough for an orbit. Definitely have enough to get us up past the 70k. Definitely will. And that's it right there. Okay. We've got 932 Delta V left. And, uh, might just see how far it will get us into our burn here. Let's just see if we can. Can we add a maneuver node here? Create a maneuver plan. Our Delta V. Uh, how, how does this work? Ah, right, here we go. Uh, we want prograde. Yeah. Keep burning. Okay, so right there we'll run out of fuel, looks like. So, that's okay. We don't really need this then. Just know that we will come down into the ocean. I'm just going to go ahead, I'm not even going to try to do a burn. In fact, we'll just uh, get up to our height above 70k and see if we can come down in the ocean right here next to Kerbal Space Program. Alright, we got our science here. Crew observation, environment data here from the Science Junior. Good. Environment samples, good. Very good. It all must be returned to the KSC. So we'll have to recover this, this uh, ship. Can we go ahead and get... Okay, it's on a crashing trajectory, that's fine. Four back up. I don't think we got anything additional there. Already completed, okay. Alrighty. We did do the mission there. Oops. So let's go ahead and go retrograde. Alright. We're just gonna come to a stop right here and we're gonna fall straight down. Oh yeah. Super hot. Okay. I'm not gonna fall straight down. I wanna leave a little bit of my Delta V to slow me down once I get into the Atmo here. But uh I don't want this Space Junior to or Science Junior to get uh burnt up. Okay. We got that one. Okay. And low orbit. Alright. Here we go. You ready, Jack? Get ready. We are about to get up in here. About to get hot in here. Okay. We're approaching some Atmo. There we go. into the atmosphere. There we go. Very nice. Let's go ahead and use your rocket to slow ourselves down. There we go. 
right, we will go ahead and jettison that. Oh, oh, no. Dang, my science junior, I didn't, I didn't, uh, <laughs> I put it in the wrong, <laughs> I put it underneath the decoupler. Okay, well, fail. That's all right. That's all right. All right, and we have splashdown. Vector the vessel is recoverable. All right, research opportunity. Go outside. Okay. We will go outside, and we will run a observation. Maybe I can't because I don't know. I, if I let go, will I sink? No, it's fine. You're good. Run the observation. Jack's doing some science. Good job, Jack. There you go. Fantastic. We're going to surface survey. Yeah, get you a sample of the water. Fantastic. Just like the water back home. Very good. All right. Experiment interrupted. Oh, there's already one here. Okay. Fantastic. Let's recover this bad boy. And, uh be on our way okay we did it not bad not bad at all fantastic okay go back to the KSC and back to mission control and here we go submit the result oh hi you're already back not only did you achieve the objective but you did so with minimal explosions take that Jeb that's right turns out our new intern snuck the mean sticky note into our break room on his behalf Jed's been wanting to press our big shiny thanks science button ever since he heard it would be dangerous for someone with no button training. Legals told him he can't touch the button until he's gone through the advanced button tr pressing at the training center. Apparently he's channeling his frustration into tiny sticky screeds. Thanks for your efforts, we now have three new coffee makers from Jeb's company. Well maybe not entirely new, there's a bit of a junkyard taste. I have a bet with a few other department heads to see who can brew the strongest coffee. The winner gets a new office of plants. If I win, I'm getting the fourth coffee maker with all the works. Exciting times, director. When you're ready, come by for your next mission. I know I'll see you lunar or later. <laughs> okay, fantastic. 40 more science. So now we have two new missions. Uh, one is to orbit Kerbin. Okay. An apoapsis less than 300 and a periapsis, periapsis greater than 70 kilometers. Fantastic. 60 signs for that. The buoyancy test. The vessel recovery team wants us to run some splashdown tests. Are uh, the pods really airtight? Okay. Land a pod in a body of water. I think I can get both of these in one go. Okay. Let's hear what he had or they have to say about orbiting Kerbin. Greetings, Director. The day has finally arrived. All of our research has culminated in a single shining moment. I have finally perfected the strongest cup of coffee. Well, I did do it with a bit of help from Newton, our intern. You've got to try the Macchiato Mark 1. Three shots of espresso, ten sugars, and a teeny tiny splash of foam. I've had two in the last hour. It's miraculous. I no longer require sleep. From here, the snack department will be taking over development. Now, on to our agenda. It's time to finally orbit Kerbin. All our attempts to orbit, orbit our beloved blue marble have resulted in what Tarmac Henry calls go boom. But how hard, can, how hard can it be to turn sideways? Maybe we just need more coffee. Your objective is to establish an orbit around Kerbin with an apoapsis less than 300 kilometers and a periapsis greater than 70 kilometers. The sweet spot is where your orbit doesn't leave Kerbin but also doesn't dip into Kerbin's atmosphere. While, at mission, while we at Mission Control are big fans of learning by doing, we are also aware that new craters could harm our chances of making the cover of Giant Launch Weekly. If you want to brush up on your space light basics, blah blee blah blee blah. Orbits are weird, going up, then sideways, then falling forever too many directions. Make sure you have the latest parts from the R&D Center and look both ways. See you soon, Director. Alright, so let's go on to, uh, actually, let's go to the Research Center first. Because I do have more science, so that means I can unlock a few more parts. And more parts is better. So let's go ahead and go to research and development right quick. 
and we can get introductory construction which gives us some different parts for more advanced uh, construction but I really want this launch clamp so I'm gonna go ahead and research that and then we'll get these solid fuel boosters do a little uh, asparagus staging we still have 87 science we, we're just blowing through this research tree it's you get way too much science I think so we can get the uh, oh man, my god we can we can just get everything like we don't even need anything like we can get into orbit no problem we can get to the moon with all these parts easily I feel like so Let's go ahead and grab the heat shield and the radial mount parachutes. Fantastic. And we also will grab some lights and utilities that might be useful. Some struts. And that's it, I guess. Okay. I could go ahead and get specialized decoupling. Why not? We're just getting science out the wazoo with these things. Okay, so now let's go back to the VAB and we're going to make a new rocket. This one is going to go into orbit easily and uh, I'll grab this one. We'll go ahead and load it in because it will be very basically the same. Uh, we do want the Sci Science Junior to be on the pod itself as well as a heat shield think can I change the ablator I don't think we need that much let's just throw in about 0.04 tons of heat shield okay pop that on there pop that on there we probably need for this initial we need a reaction wheel because we're gonna put on some where's the reaction wheel did I get a reaction wheel yeah there it is all right we've got a reaction wheel here okay fantastic we, we are we're gonna be uh, rocking and rolling all right so we got the reaction wheel we got I don't think we'll need any solar panels or anything like that. I don't think we'll need any parach additional parachutes. Um, could throw some drogue chutes in, I guess. Just for giggles. Just to make sure we have enough. I mean, I don't think we really need them, but let's pop that up there. We don't, we don't even need those. I'm just using them because we got them. All right. So then we also will need, though, down here, we're going to get rid of that and get our other engine, the Reliant. It's a little, got a little more oomph to it, which will be good. And we're also going to use some decouplers, radial decouplers, that is. And we're going to pop on a couple of boosters with those we've got the hammer the flea and the separate we'll throw some hammers on there bada bing like so and these guys are going to fire at the same at the same time as that guy there we go and then we'll detach those detach that fire that okay you need, you need to separate those up because I don't want both of these detaching at the same time so add in one there there you go that's why you gotta check your staging okay so let's grab this stuff move it down actually now let's get to the, take these fins off I want to do the wing shape. I want to change this to two. Like so. And then these boosters be on like that. OK. 
Okay. Like these fans are not on there, right? Okay. That's good. Now I need a nose cone. Nose cone. Where's aerodynamics? There it is. Nose cones. Pink. All right. 3284, it says. All right. So let's grab these up here. Take them off. And we'll grab one of that. One of that. That gives me 3408. That'll be good. We'll take all that off, take these off, there we go, like so, 3721, that should be perfect. Alright, let's go ahead and grab the launch clamp, put it on the back side. Like so. Oh, high, awfully high, isn't it? Put that down towards the ground here. There we go. Fantastic. Fantastique. Alright. There we go. And then I think we are ready to do everything. Check my staging, radials, second stage, okay, fantastic, I think we're ready, 3721, that should be enough to get us into orbit, who is going to be the first Kerbal into orbit, we got Trident, uh, let's go ahead and throw Salad in there, Salad's been wanting to get some action, another one of my oldest members, Salad. So we're going to grab Salad in here. Salad's going to be the second Kerbal into orbit. First Kerbal to have a lot of fancy stuff, however. And one of the fancy things we're going to have is just a nice old-fashioned antenna. And that antenna is going to go here on the back, pink, like so. All right. We're going to save this vehicle as the Deviant 2. The other Deviant 2 didn't get saved apparently. Alright, Salad is ready to join the other two Kerbals, Jack and DV, in their journeys into space. He's getting ready to climb the platform to get to his rocket in all of its glory. How do you feel today, Salad? Contemplative. Mmm. I understand. Salad is ready to begin the countdown and start the launch. Are you ready? Go. What? No, I guess no countdown. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I don't what, what am I doing that is stopping from getting a countdown? I'm not sure. But. All right, here we go. We are trying to do our gravity turn. It's a little tougher without the swivel engine on the bottom. I can tell you that already. And so we are going straight up for the most part here. And detach our boosters. Still going mostly straight up. This is a failure of the greatest kind. Can't do my gravity turn because the swivel engine, I mean, the, the Reliant engine does not have a swivel on it, so I'm relying solely on the reaction wheel, which does not have a lot of authority over this large rocket. I probably should have put at least a couple of them on there, but uh, I think we'll be all right. I think we're still making a nice gravity turn here. We're going to have some fuel left over in this lower stage to do our injection burn. Not a lot, but some. We're going to get up to about 80,000 and stop there. Now we're going to go ahead and go up to our apoapsis. We will begin our burn with this lower stage and then finalize it with the upper stage and we'll be in good shape.
All right, we have extended our antenna. That's good. And should be able to do some good science in orbit. I'm gonna wait to run it while we're in orbit. I've already got it in water and atmosphere, apparently. So, interesting. All right, let's go to our map mode. You can see our debris there. I'm surprised that didn't burn up. That's okay. Oh, that's probably the, the clamp, launch clamp. All right, we're getting ready to get up to our apoapsis. We're gonna do our burn. We'll do it at 90 degrees instead of at prograde because uh, we want to increase our trajectory over the planet here. So are we ready? And burn. There we go. We're burning. We're going to detach this stage. Ignite our upper stage. And this should get us into orbit relatively easily. Ideally, we would have a little extra delta V to uh, to do some other stuff with, but we're just we just need to get into into orbit basically, and we need to splash down into the water. And I hope on the uh, light side of the planet this time, <laughs> ideally. Okay. Come on around, baby. Come on around. There we go. Um, I want to burn a little bit more. The other way. To get our periapsis up above 70k. Oh man, I'm almost out of Delta V. We're gonna pass a little bit down. Ooh. Man, this is this is close. We're gonna pass through the atmosphere just a little bit, or well, not the atmosphere. We're gonna get dip a little bit below space, just a little. Yeah, but uh, it shouldn't slow us down much because there's not really much atmosphere at 68,000 or 65,000. I guess will be the lowest that we go. And then we'll pop back up. We barely had enough Delta V here. Mostly because my gravity turn was terrible at the very beginning. So. That's a. That's a thing. Alright, we're passing our periapsis. Should start going back up now. Yep. We are. Good. And I want to warp around to the apoapsis. And uh, do it just a teeny tiny burn because we don't have much fuel left. To be honest. Don't have much fuel left. In fact, I probably should have just let myself pass through the atmosphere just a little bit anyway instead of trying to burn. I definitely want to get this orbit. This time around. Okay. Alright. How much, if I create a maneuver plan, and I burn prograde, how much will it take? Get that periapsis up. I can't tell. I can't tell anything. What's the new periapsis? Man, I, I don't have any information. Where's all my information at? Um, I guess that's higher. I mean, I know it's higher, but what is it? I want to know the number. Oh, that's 84,000. Okay, so for 15 Delta V, I can get up to 84,000. That'll be fine. Okay. Well, let's do that then. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and warp to that burn, I guess. All right, let's go prograde. There we go. Yep, 
8 minutes, 7 minutes, 6 minutes, 5 minutes, 4 minutes, 3 minutes, 2 minutes, and get a nice shot here. Very good. I wish that engine wasn't highlighted. There we go. Beautiful. All right. One minute to burn. We're going to burn for 15 Delta V. And uh, that should still be enough to get us back down to the planet. Okay. That was <laughs> barely... Barely tapped it and uh, basically burnt up half my delta V left. Okay, so now we are in orbit. That's good. Sal's going to go outside and he is going to uh, let go, run a crew observation. I think first observation ran in orbit. Okay. Good. Says invalid research location. Why is that? Don't know. Okay, well, I got it anyway. Right, that's good. Can we run the Science Junior? Already got it. Okay. Fantastic. Anything else we can run? Any other science? Okay, we got the high orbit environment data. Crew observation in high orbit, environment samples in high orbit. Okay, so 48 science for that. That'd be great. I could transmit it now. Uh, do I get only partial? Some of these have to be returned. Okay. Yeah, some of these have to be returned, it says. All right. So very good I think there's nothing else to do but to come back down and um, I'll have to do that back at the Apoapsis again okay we're gonna burn retrograde so let's spin around let's burn retrograde and unfortunately this is gonna be pretty hairy because we don't have much left, yep. <laughs> so, oh yeah, yeah. This is gonna take us a while, because we're gonna have to let our orbit naturally degrade by going through the atmosphere, which is not. I, yeah, this this is not good. That barely made us do anything. In fact, I don't think we lost a single meter in our periapsis. So you know what that means? Salad is stuck. Well, let's see if this trick works that we used to do in KSP-1. We've got our jetpack, an RCS pack. So, salad. Make sure we're pointing in retrograde, which we are. Salad's going to get out. And let go. Turn on your jetpack. All right. And yeah, we're going to see if we can slow this mother down. There we go. We are going to get... Oh. Got magnetic boots or something? That's interesting. Okay. Let's slow her down, bud. Let's slow her down. Okay. You can see my meter up here running out. You can see down here the periapsis is coming down. If we can get below 60, that would be ideal. So, let's see.
Oh, the Deviant 2 is out of electricity. Dang. That's going to make it a lot harder to do my, my push here. You can see it. The, the ship is moving as I'm trying to push it. And that, that's going to make it a lot more difficult. I could just go ahead and jettison this. And that will slow us down even more. So... Oh man, are you telling me I can't jettison because... Okay, I just can't use the staging because uh, the... Uh, I don't have electricity. <laughs> Alright, well, that's gonna be interesting. Theoretically, it should settle so that the heat shield is within. There we go. There we go. Getting nice and toasty here. I don't think this will be a terminal capture. Looks like we are going back up. But we are slowing down nice and good. So, probably the next we'll have to do maybe two more orbits. And then, uh, oh, we got some more research. Interesting. Cool. All right, the PE is cut down to 42,000. We are, we are still climbing slowly. You can see our altitude is climbing. So we are definitely going to uh, get back into, uh, I don't know, our apoapsis is below space level. So this may have been a terminal capture. Yes, it was. It was a terminal capture, and it looks like the periapsis is still shrinking. It might, if we get lucky, we might end up right here in this little bay. Uh, theoretically, we could be in this part of the ocean, but I don't know. All right. We're still just rolling. Just rolling. Salad is, uh, just checking it out, you know? Oh, yeah. We're coming in hot now, for sure. There you go. Very nice. We're slowing down pretty good. Building up some heat there. There we go. How's that a blader looking? Good, it's all right. White hot. It's a blading. The bladers are blading. Hey, we're at twenty thousand. That's good. Let's deploy our drogue shoots. This to start slowing us down pretty good. All right, and we'll deploy the main chute. Wink. Very nice. I think we're over the water. It's hard to tell. It's really dark. Let's close the parts manager. Drogue chutes are deployed fully. Main chute is open. We are on our way down at a pretty saucy 8 meters per second still. I hope that doesn't destroy the... Uh... Can I, can I de jettison this ablator? No. Yeah, I can't, I can't jettison it. Ah. That's alright. The old... Uh... Herbal Space Program 1, you could, you could jettison that later, but not in this one. Hopefully, it doesn't destroy our Science Junior. 8 meters per second. It's pretty saucy. Pretty, pretty saucy. Alright, here's the water. Alright. We are good. We are good. We made it. Fantastic. Okay. Amazing. Outstanding job. Good job, Sal. Let's go into Mission Control. 
Let's first check out the buoyancy test. We'll submit that. You floated. You kind of looked like a nice cube and a big old cup of coffee. Luckily, our vessels don't melt. Well, at least not in water. Our recovery team is out there in full force today. Boats, helicopters, free swimming with floaties. You'd think they realize it's faster to use a boat than a doggy paddle to vessel back to KSC. I think they just wanted to swim, honestly. All right, fantastic. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, and then Orbit Kerbin. There you are, you magnificent magnet of scientific study. You, you did amazing. We had a watch party to celebrate. There was an exact replica of your vessel made of cake. It was surprisingly flammable. You might have noticed that a new set of missions are now available. You see, if the main missions are canon, these contracts are the adventurous spin-offs. Some of these challenges bring in more science. Others exist to keep our part manufacturers happy. We can't afford to turn anyone away. You know this is the first space program on Kerbin, right? Now that you've com conquered orbit, it's time to visit our newest neighbor, the Moon. Come back when you're ready to go. All right, fantastic. We did it. Thanks, science. Okay, got new missions. The Mun or Bust. Time to visit our nearest neighbor. Establish an orbit around the Mun. Fantastic, we can do that. Going green. Concerned about some of the goo that gets dumped down the sink at the R&D center. Might be messing with the grass. It's too green, right? Take a quick peek. Make sure we haven't made this place radioactive. Attach a science junior to a vessel and perform an environment survey on Kerbin. Oh, that's easy. Strutco wants us to strut our stuff around Kerbin. They've got an idea to strut Keep our astronauts attached to a vessel while on EVA. Staying attached to the ship so you don't float away? Why didn't we think of that? Anyway, we need to give them a demonstration of untethered EVA so they got some referential material to work with. Okay, so we got to do an EVA while in orbit. No problem. Do a, space, a science junior perform an environment survey on Kerbin. No problem. Those should be relatively easy. Let's go to the R&D center, though. Take a look. we got tons of science now. 242. We're going to get orbital rocketry. This terrier engine will get us to the Mun easily. All right. Um, micro construction. I'm not super concerned with that just a little yet. Aviation, not super concerned with. Payloads. Uh, car these are like cargo bays, I guess. Engine mounts. Fairings. Might need that fairing. i grab that. Power management, some solar panels and batteries. Grab that. Reaction control, monopropellant, need that. And MUN landing, we need some parts for that. Ooh, including a lander can. That'll be great. That's 80, okay. Monopropellant, long range probes. This is better uh, communication and better robotics. Research min miniaturization, the science junior junior. Or basic docking. Ooh. I would love to be able to do start doing some docking. But do we want to do docking or the moon landing first? I think we'll do moon landing first. Then we'll do the... Um, actually, you know what? Let's do docking first. And we can do a satellite or something in space. And uh, get some extra science. We can do the Science Junior on Kerbin and the spacewalk and we'll launch a satellite which is will be the sputnik and then we'll be in good shape all right cool i could go ahead and get basic trusses I don't, I don't think we'll need it straight away so i'm gonna save that science for that all right so i hope you have enjoyed this episode of kerbal space program season two if you did be sure and hit that like button i'll see you guys next time bye